we use a, a mix right now of uh, hard and fast data, which is really invaluable because it's, it's where you can actually get some solid direction from, and also our own instinct as buyers as well. It's not all data, it's not all instinct, it's a combination of the two. I find most important uh, on a day-to-day -day basis is just the dashboard, having a, you know, uh, at a glance summary of how everything's doing, how sales are going, it's kind of the first thing I check every single day because it's important to have a handle on all of that. We look at what's historically been popular for us uh, or successful for us in terms of categories, so whether that's you know, leather goods or a particular style of jewellery or shoes. If we look at subsection of their collection or any particular trend uh, that's really driving demand where we need to focus our buys again in the future, we can break it down by kind of broad category and also look at previous sales to look at very, very specific subcategories to understand what's popular uh, and where we could potentially look for more designers who specialise in one particular field. We look at our sales reports by particular time of year and then break it down by category. For example, with seasonal items, when they're going to be most popular, when we need to up our buys for those, uh, and then also what times of year there's going to be a lot less demand for those and we should probably minimise buys or make no buys for those particular categories at all. For example, gloves, we're not going to order you know, thick wool-lined mittens in June, for example. Looking at the sales by supplier reports is a really important one to understand. Uh, you know, how fast inventory is moving. Um, if it's not at all, then obviously we need to you know, figure out whether it's an, an issue with the inventory itself or our merchandising. We can see what the best selling items were in particular to understand if there's any particular um, subsection of their collection or any particular trend uh, that's really driving demand where we need to focus our buys again in the future to make sure that we have inventory to meet that demand and also minimize our buys where we have inventory that's just not selling. We definitely use a popular products list. Those are the products that drive the bulk of our business. We have a really good handle on which brands and which particular designers are doing best for us. When we put together our buying plan for any given season, we'll know which categories have been most popular driven by that list of, of best sellers. We do it by supplier and by individual products to make sure that we are always fully stocked uh, and that there's never any risk of us running out. So we might have several hundred or even thousand SKUs at any one time. It's the very top of that that's going to be driving most of our sales. We keep a very, very close eye on that top 10 bestseller list. We offer a really kind of curated selection of designers that um, fit a particular style and using the data that we have I think we've done a pretty good job of buying so um, thankfully we don't sit on too much inventory that doesn't move. If we do have any inventory left at the end of a season for really seasonal items, um, for example at the end of winter with scarves and gloves and toques, then you know we'll offer markdowns on those. We do look at our inventory that hasn't moved at all, we'll analyse how we've merchandised it and if it's just an issue with merchandising we'll move it around, create new displays, always making sure that it feels fresh um, and if we really have exhaustively tried merchandising that's you know good information for us it's a supplier that will probably not continue working with and also that drives our decisions around markdowns as well what we're going to um, offer markdowns on uh, and to what extent we want to mark things down as well. One piece of advice I would give is if you're going to fail, fail fast so that you can um, change what you do and, and change direction really, really quickly. I've bought product lines in the past that I was a huge fan of, like my style head to toe uh, and they just did not move and I didn't take it personally and think, oh no, nobody likes my style or my choices as a buyer. It just is a case of learning from that and you know, adapting what you do for the future. Be honest with yourself about how you're doing as a buyer. If things aren't working, you can just change them, it's not the end of the world. But you do need to realise that things might need to change.